Hey, I'm Joel. I wasn't here when we started. Um, I start. I signed up to do a code review talk tonight, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I have a little bit of a uh, little bit of just talking to you to do, and then uh, I, I told Andrew, I agreed to Andrew that I would actually review his code, so I was purposefully not paying attention to what he was doing. Um, was there a PR or something? Uh, oh, oh, make me something that I can. Like put kitty pictures on or something. Um, yeah. So my name's Joel Butter. Uh, I don't have slides because I don't know why I didn't make slides. But here we go. Uh, so the first rule of code review, unless you want to be fired from your job, is to be polite. Uh, whenever you want to talk to someone about their code, uh, you don't know where they are in life. <laughs> you don't know what kind of day they're having. If you come out, if you come over the table at them and be a dick to them, you're just going to make them angry, probably. But at worst, you're going to make their day worse, and you don't want that. You're on the same team. Um, you might even want the same thing from the code that you're working on. So be polite. Um, probably don't want to tell them that they're the worst human being that's ever lived because they like used the wrong string engine or something. Maybe you do. Probably don't. Um, second rule, you only to ask questions. Um, I find a lot of people who do code reviews, uh, they will look at a code review, they'll look at some code, and they'll just be like, that looks like it'll probably work. And that doesn't help anyone, because um, they probably don't understand what they've done. Uh, especially for new people, you should definitely encourage people to ask questions. Like, if you go and talk to someone about code that you've just written, you like point at a thing, you're like, do you understand that? They might go, no. But on a code review, they won't. So it's on you if you're doing a code review. If you don't understand anything in there, just be like, what are you doing here? I don't understand what this weird JavaScript syntax is. I don't know what this copy script is doing. Why did you use Haskell in this Ruby project? <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> um, same thing with code that's not clear in what it's trying to do. Um, it's very easy in Ruby when you're starting um, to make big messes uh, that can be solved with much smaller Rubyisms. And if you're not sure why that thing's being used, the person that wrote it probably isn't either. So that's a good thing to question, like, why did you use select, reject, present, map? Why, why did you chain this 10 times instead of just using any? That's a good question. Um, so always ask questions. You will probably find out that if something doesn't make sense to you, it didn't make sense to the person who wrote it most of the time. Uh, third rule, gamble. Yes. Tell, tell people they're wrong. Sometimes you're going to be wrong about that. But be willing to say, oops, I made a mistake, and move on. This is a gamble you take sometimes with code review. You're just like, this looks stupid, you're stupid. What are you doing? And they're like, actually, there's this reason. And you're like, oh, cool. Gamble when you do things. Don't be, be polite, but you know, you gamble. Um, if you can verify a thing is wrong, or if you think it's wrong, and you can do it in 10 minutes, you should just do it. Uh, it's a lot faster for you to do that than to interrupt someone and make them prove it, especially if they've moved on to something else. Uh, if you're in a code review, just hop over the console, check it out. Uh, I do this all day, but I do code review for a living, so basically I live in IRB and GitHub. That's that's my day most days, and email. Um, going back to asking questions, know your audience. This is my next rule. Uh, don't run across a lot of new Rubyists. Uh, you treat them very differently than someone who's been using for Ruby for five years. Um, there are people who are new to the team, new to the company, etc. Treat them a little differently. Always be polite. Uh, I'm going to keep hammering be polite, but uh, you don't want to you don't want to treat someone like someone you've been working with. You can treat someone you've been working with for ten years very differently than someone who's 22 years old, just out of college. They don't have any style established. They don't know like how to program really, probably, unless they've been doing it a long time already. Just you got to know your audience. People respond differently. Uh, new people to the programming languages, you know, you're like, 
here's a thing, here's why you should do this thing, here's what happens when you don't do this thing, you need a lot more explanation, and it's hard to work, but it will help you later not have to review the same code and tell them the exact same thing. Like, here's, a, here's an example from real life. Um, there's this guy, he's 22, he's on my team, uh, and Ruby, this is his first summer ever using a Ruby, he's an intern, um, and you know, he, he just doesn't know Rails, he doesn't know Ruby, like it's first time. So when I explain to him, hey man, you can actually use these things in Active Record, and they're better than this thing because these are deprecated, and here's the performance characteristics, and here's what you've done wrong, and this is what an N plus one is. Like I can go through a lot more detail, and this is the sort of thing you need to tell a person, you know, someone you've been working with for 10 years, and be like, I think this is an N plus one, they'll be like, oh. <laughs> you can probably put like a little Charlie Brown gif in there. You know, it's a different thing. Um, so just know who you're talking to. Um, and be polite. Um, a lot of times, the written communication you do on a pull request, uh, it's hard to get emotion across. So if you're in a hurry, you'll be like, hey, I don't think this is right. And it might, you might read it and you just, you're like, oh, I came off like a big jerk. Be polite. Say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to start a fight with you. I just, I think something's wrong. Or you go talk to him and like get a massage, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Somehow, you know, be smooth, be polite. Uh, and my last rule, be polite. <laughs> no name calling. Don't bully people. Um, you'll not get what, no one will get what they want from their job. Uh, always be constructive and willing to stand behind what you say. If you're like, I think this could be, better, could be better, and they're like, I don't, then you're like, here's some code that I wrote. Uh, code review can take a lot of time. Uh, like I said, it's a full-time job for me almost. Um, and I've been doing this for a while now, but um, you know, always be willing to stand behind what you say and be wrong. But again, what's my number one rule? Be polite. Always be polite. Uh, I'm going to do some live code review. I found out in the course of doing uh, doing research for this, there is a code review stack exchange. It is easily enough, it's codereview.stackexchange.com. People go on there and post rando code and ask people to tell them what to do. It's pretty neat. Uh, all kinds of languages, if you want to learn new languages and why things are the way they are. Um, I tried to find a good example for class, but I couldn't find anything that wasn't in Java that seemed like a good one. I didn't, I didn't want to present Java here, so here we are. Is there a PR up? Andrew? Yeah, Andrew is a collaborator and created a PR for the branch. Okay, let's see. should have signed it to so, before you start in there, can I ask, do you do entirely like remote distributed code reviews, or do you do in-person code reviews, or is it a mix? It's a mix. Um, on my previous contracts, it was all remote, basically. Currently, I'm working on two days in-house and three days remote. So, just a mix. Very slow. Okay, so I have a comment. <laughs> um, I think that's self-explanatory. Maybe not. This is please accept this as your as your description for your PR. <laughs> <laughs> This is what you would get. Um, I, I thought of a thing on the way over here that we could try to. Um, if anyone has some code they want to review live, you should make it just and either tweet it at me or put it in the uh, the room, and we'll just do it as a class, I guess. I don't know if anyone wants to do that, but um, so. I'm just kind of looking at this thing. I have no idea what it's supposed to do. There's this like weird thing here. It's like, do we even need this file? 
doesn't appear to be loaded there. Uh, so a lot of things that I do, uh, when you have been doing the codes for a while, you try several passes at code review. The first one is usually, how do I get this to a state that I can read it? Uh, and then you start attacking the other parts of it. And when I say attack, I mean try to understand, not like shooting it with guns or something. We're getting it with this. Uh, so this is pretty small code. I probably could just read it. Um, but you know, I, I would start with some. Uh, why is it so slow? Uh, So, you know, if I was doing this as, as part of the company I'm working for now, we have a style guide. Um, so on this, uh, on this particular style right here, where's my code review? This is probably what I'd do. <laughs> that, that's tasteless. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that in class. Um, <laughs> no, but you know, there's a lot of stuff where it'll be it'll be specific to your uh, to your organization. So in this case, I would say, hey, you should have some friends. I wouldn't put other jokes probably anywhere. <laughs> But Except for the part where you had that cue button ready to go. That was me doing something you shouldn't do. Here's here's actually what I would do. <laughs> See, this is the polite version of what I did first. Um, yeah, so I think uh, my next step would be looking at this. You know, you look at you look at a lot of things. Uh, I'm like super excited. There are tests. White space. You know, this is just first pass. Uh, oh God, there's so much white space. <laughs> so. I'm looking at this guy and I'm thinking really, uh, you know, you're like indented like four times here. Let's, mm -hmm. I think we can do better. <laughs> uh, just turn that down a little. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, there's there's some stuff here. Uh, so probably what I would actually try and suggest here, once we got past all this kind of syntactical stuff, is a different a different way of attacking. Um, say, you know, can we just return early? I can spell too. Uh, Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, another thing I thought of on the way over here. <laughs> uh, another thing that's good to do for people, uh, it can be very disheartening to go through a pull request chain that's really long. Uh, I'm currently on comment 104 on this one DR that I've been working on for like a week. And I'm just like every day, it's like 20 new ones. The guys are totally game for it, but I'm just like, come on, let's cross that finish line. So when you get into a situation like that, it's often really nice for the person to have some encouragement. So in this case, it does. Uh, and it doesn't take much. Uh, it's very easy to get into a negative mindset, though, when you're doing. I don't know what Kyle is putting into the NDRP channel. But I'm going to. <laughs> 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 
this off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so any any positive reinforcement? Yep. Is there any reference that would teach you what not to do before you get hammered? You see what I'm saying? Or is it just OJT learned by trial by fire? Yes and no. It's going to be very dependent on your organization. Um, so a lot of organizations have a style guide. Right. So like that's the that's like the minimum bar. If you don't get over the minimum bar on syntax, like I'm probably going to come into your PR and leave under comments that are like you should use hash rocket too instead of JSON style, or use double quotes instead of single quotes. And then you're going to spend all day like retyping single characters, and that's not going to make you happy because you could have just done it in the first place. So there's style guides. Uh, then after that, there are automated tools. Uh, Flog is one. Uh, code. Uh, climate. CoClimate is a product that a lot of companies use. That is like automated. Uh, CoClimate is a, a website uh, that does automated, essentially Ruby style grading, like project level style grading. So it'll say this class is very complex. It has a lot of long methods. There's a lot of annotation. Has a lot of if and else. Uh, you know, it's 10,000 lines long, etc. This is an F. You should really look at this class and think about your life and, <laughs> <laughs> and do something else. Um, and then sometimes, you know, you're good. So uh, there are automated tools for it, and those can help a lot. Um, a lot of them are just command line tools. CodeClimate just happens to be a web interface to all to a bunch of those tools. Uh, they've tightened it up a lot and made it all kind of integrated and it works with GitHub and I think that bucket too. Um, it's really nice. If if you're not in a situation where that is not a thing you can use, then you can use the, the open source versions. Uh, uh, Rubocop is a syntax uh, checker. There's much stuff like that. Um, metric foo. Metric foo is good. Play, Play simple code. R cub if you're on some sort of weird planet where you're using 187. So does that answer your question? Sure. Okay. And I think Miles and I both posted so GitHub has a Ruby style guide. And I think a lot of Ruby companies have very similar preferences a lot of the time. So if you start with GitHub's Ruby style guide, you're probably 95% of the way there. Um, but it's you know it's it's good to sort of Take inspiration from that, but maybe not get overly bogged down, especially when you're learning with, you know, am I getting every single bit of syntax right, and is Joel going to flog me on a pull request? Yes. A play. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Forget what I was going to say. I'm sorry. Uh, so, beyond the syntax style stuff, once you start getting into more conceptual, you know, how the code is structured, I would imagine it, it might be easy to get into where you feel like you end up having to write a lot of code for people. Do you actively try to work against that and instead try to guide them in a direction or some do you find yourself having to kind of write a lot of pseudocode or full concepts out? Again, it's a it's dependent a lot on your audience. Um, so I'm currently working with a bunch of people who are six months or less Ruby experience, and then a bunch of other people who are like five years of experience. So for the one team, I'm like, here's a thing that you don't know about. You should use that instead. And if they're like, I don't know how, then I'm like, here's some code. Uh, the other team, I can mostly just be like, hey, you know you're doing this wrong, so stop. They will argue or agree, and we can come to a consensus very quickly without a large amount of code. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's I consider that part of code review, though. It's just sometimes you're going to have to essentially be like, here's a better way. And sometimes that's you know writing five lines of code, and sometimes that's writing a class hierarchy. Um, when you get into that like kind of structural engineering step, I find it's a lot better to just go and like sit with a person or Skype with them. And just be like, here's why we might choose to do this. You know, 
right now this works, but when we add to that, this is going to fail. So again, it's knowing your audience, knowing what you're doing. It's all contextual. I'm sorry, I can't give you hard and fast rules, but then it breaks. Um, I do I do write a considerable amount of code in my scratch buffer, and then throw it in the IRB and see if I was right. Or you know, when I write a test really fast and see if I was right. Any other questions, comments? Have you, find, have you found anything better in your GitHub to review the code and actual changes to files and stuff like that? Um, so I like Bitbucket slightly better. They have some stuff like uh, actual literal acceptance, like click a check mark, I agree this is ready. And there's like change tracking for that thing. Um, so it will say Joel accepted this at 4.30 p.m. Barely, he agrees. Um, my company wrote a tool which is now kind of deprecated. It's called Codiferous, uh, which probably is a thing. Atlassian just launched a beta product that has a bunch of the features that Codiferous did. Um, I haven't used it yet. It looks pretty cool. Lawsuit? <laughs> Sounds nice. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, but uh, I don't know of, of much that's great. Uh, there's Fabricator, which is a thing from Facebook, which has some merits. Um, I'm kind of drawing a blank. GitHub's pretty good. Not my favorite, but it's pretty good for most things. It's not great for uh, small change requests because it's very it's PR focused, and it's not good for reviewing code base as a whole because it doesn't it doesn't have any mechanism for that. Any other questions? Yeah, Grace, um, um, so when you do a code review and then you know, maybe it push changes what you're getting, what your workflow is like at your company. You know, do you guys then like you know, at the end or something? One of the guys I work with like they'll have like first commits and then release everything once we reviewed everything, put it in a line or something. So I was just curious how that kind of would typically go if you were reviewing some code. Um, not not a huge fan of rebase in GitHub because they're at least as of three months ago their thing did not deal with rebase at all. It basically squashes everything. Yeah, everything gets Weirdly. Yeah. So <laughs> if it worked right, I would probably be pro rebase, but we just we just merge whatever in and uh, keep going on with our lives. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what we were into. Like, so we have to pretty much just like make sure everything's done. Like, okay, we're done. We're done. Okay, rebase, and then everything disappears. <laughs> no. Oh, everything happened today, and now there's all these comments up here which have no context. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, which is why I don't. I don't suggest rebasing on GitHub. I don't know. I don't remember what Bitbucket's behavior is in that case. Um, they're very similar flows. They're both based on PR. Um, they have slight differences. But. Merge. Just merge it in. Merge commits. Anything else? Okay. I wrote a purposefully bad class. Set of classes for you. Uh, this is old code. And I thought we would do a little code review just to just to tell you. What I think, I'm just going to do it with comments if that's okay. Uh, who wants to start? What's what's bad? Anything? Arc splat. It's just taking one option out. Or it's oh. just, like, 
You just said, oh, I didn't read the rest of it. <laughs> you don't really mean parentheses when you do that. Uh, which one? Here? Just, yeah. Yeah, numbers are options. I'm trying to type on the TV, that's just. What is other noun? What is other noun? Um, these are classes that I came up with. I couldn't think of good test class names, so I was. No, I'm saying if I were code reviewing, I would yeah, say what, what is other noun? Why did you name your class other noun? So, I get why you did it in this context, but. Right. There's no local for options in that. Oh, yeah, I guess there is. Never mind. That's weird. Uh, you're rescuing from, from exception, uh, which is a bad thing to do. You rescue standard error or custom errors or something like that. We found that a lot faster. I expected that to be the last one. That's the race condition in this code. <laughs> uh, explicit return in that rescue. Yeah. I didn't write a second version of this. This is my only version. Actually, the explicit returns both places. Just all over the place. <laughs> value and less value, you don't know. <laughs> 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 In the initialize of other noun, really you can just pass in the title if that's all there is. <coughs> Method definition on line 20 self identify. Um, got dinged on the no parents, right? <laughs> options isn't used yeah. either. I often feel weird about using unless, like in line 14. I would probably write it if not equal. I disagree. Fair enough. English being our first language. I find that there's extra overhead that my brain has to do to understand unless. Are you not a native speaker? I am. Yes. But nonetheless, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's simply a fact, Jerry, that I have, it takes me an extra cycle. So maybe that's not true yeah. for other people. That uh, I just mean, that would be my, my personal so, language. I'd say it takes me one less cycle to do unless than it does to do if not. Really? Unless there's not else. Yeah, and then an else complicates the math. Yeah, let's right. see where titles are just anywhere else. It's probably just one of those things where the team mm -hmm. options are. Commonly, I think your style is preferred. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I still use unless sometimes. But sometimes it feels right, and sometimes I'm like, I don't know. Okay. Okay. I avoid unless at all costs. Um, on line 16, you don't need to reference what you want because you're a class I think what it means is my brain is breaking, actually. Well, also, Ruby is not English. It's closer than any other computer language. That's true. Ish. It depends on whether you use it less or not. <laughs> <laughs> this is more about the, I guess, the, the needs of the class, but if you're able to set the title through um, new, I'm not sure if you want to be able to set it after. You know, just a matter of like, I guess in general, you want to try to give it the less, least accessibility necessary, the safest amount. My brain also is too broken to parse our spec most of the time, so 
That's more cool. I be my own. I gave me a lot of PR stuff. And no one's going to do me on my 44? I was about to, yeah. You got Hash Rocket and JSON style. At least, I mean, at least that. <laughs> I mix quotes. No spaces. <laughs> That's my favorite line. This is fun. Okay, so I think that that's enough. I have demonstrated that it's very possible to have very high density code review. We've, we've basically left a review at least one per line in this set of classes. Um, so sometimes you're dealing with this sort of thing. And I guess we didn't really get into my job class, but I wrote that as if. I was writing normal code, not bad code, so mostly. Um, so yeah, when you get into something like this, I think this is where you need to be very careful about being polite. And it's also very easy for the reviewer to kind of lose steam. Because, I mean, you can imagine if this was in a PR and there were like another 50 classes in that PR, you'd just be like, <laughs> and it's very easy to get frustrated yourself. Uh, so, you know, as part of being polite, always like look at what you're about to to send to someone because you can't undo it. It's going to be in your email, basically. Always look at what you're going to do. If it seems at all like you're going to kind of come off bad or be mean, then maybe you want to take a look at that and like write something else, be more constructive. Just delete your comment entirely. Come back later after you've had a, an apple or something. <laughs> you know, get that blood sugar up. Um, so, like, how? There would come a point where I would think about just rewriting this, and sort of so that being the entirety of my suggestion. How would you like? It seems like it would be really frustrating for the other person, even if they were all polite comments, to receive. 40 comments for 30 lines, or what have you. Right. Um, so I think in this case, if I saw something like this more than once from a person, like my my most, probably probably my reaction would be that person needs to pair a program with someone mm -hmm. for a week. Like they, they need to have style pushed on them for a minute. And they need to learn some stuff. They need a fashion. They, they essentially need a full throttle help, like not not an asynchronous help. Um, but sometimes you can't do that. In that case, I would say I would just write. It. I would be like, you know, here are the things that I think are less than optimal. You know, here's an example. I would probably just rewrite one of the classes and explain all of my changes. And, it, it is. It takes a long time, but that, I mean that's my job. Right. Uh, if you're on a thing where doing that over and over again is causing problems, then it might be more of a management issue. Like this person's not not doing right. How can we fix it? And it might be pair programming. It might actually just be like this person's not cut out for writing RP. Um, Why'd you hire this? So probably it's just that they don't know Ruby and they need a little help to develop some style. Uh, and that's totally a reasonable thing. Just have someone like work with them an hour, two, three, four, eight a day until uh, until they got it down. I mean in this case the code mostly functioned, right? And it just looked like a little bit. I realize you wrote the code like as a exercise thing for us to see back code or what have you, but <clears throat> you could maybe see where, you know, maybe they came from <clears throat> just a completely different language, a, you know, a statically, a more statically typed explicit language, and so they perhaps tried to read some various, like maybe they tried to read the Rails code and then cop some of that style, hence the options and the auto splats and whatnot, without really understanding exactly why. 
I, I tried to pull in. Yeah. I mean, it's all it's all fixable. Like this is not tremendously wrong. There are some bugs that I found testing it on IRB. But I, I feel like the difference that at the point where you do have you know, 30 comments and, and very little changes, there might be flaws in the style sheet because it seems like some of those things. And I feel like there's a fairness. As soon as there's a style sheet, I, I feel like anything that I do that that is that is you know. It contravails the, the style sheet, I, I should be skewered for. Uh, but but it's, it's something that, that I think it's somebody would legitimately might not know yet. I think it, it almost comes down to like a question of fairness. Because there are some things that, that, you know, unless and if, they're both valid. If you have a preference for one and your style sheet says you don't use unless, I don't use unless. Right. But it's because I wrote the style sheet and, and really see to please you. And so there's, there's that aspect. But it seems like. If it's not if it's not written down somewhere, that's where the gaps start to come together. I agree to an extent. There's style, like just syntactical style, and then there's idiomatic Ruby, which is another style. And this is all over the place, really, in terms of Ruby style, right? Like I've got some weird structures here. I've got like weird class hierarchy, kind of. It's just weird code, and that's partially because I wrote sample code, not real code. But, yeah. Um, and I think. Yeah, I, I mean, the thing is, what idioms you prefer? Yeah, I think I would. Uh, to that point, there's a there's an interesting commit the series of comments in Rails recently, where an Aaron Patterson had used like comma equals, and uh, somebody jumped in and said, "Hey, you know, you show off. Like, I understand that you know Ruby really well." Don't even show up on case something more idiomatic, like whatever it was. Um, and Aaron Patterson jumps back on and says, Well, I think it depends on what idiom you're talking about. For example, in Rails, and then he did like a word count, like the number of lines in which the idiom he was using was used versus the other guy. So, it's, you know, it depends on the project, I think. So, there's there's certain right. unwritten style guides and there's certain written style guides. I mean, conforming to what's already there. Anyway, we agree mostly, I okay. think, if not completely. Uh, I don't know that I would write my idioms down. You could write down the one you hate. I definitely could, unless, unless like double negative is my least favorite thing that people do in Ruby. I don't specifically hate unless, but it's often used with unless nil or less blank. And I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> right. So there's stuff like that where I mean just using unless by itself, I don't care. It's just like one thing, sure. But it's often And I'm not here to defend other two lines. We can bear it unless if that's what needs to happen. The keyword not should <laughs> be taken out of language. I don't think a style guide would get that other noun is a bad name for a class. <laughs> you know? Or verb. I probably should have used some uh, Rails keywords as things here. That would be <laughs> I didn't think of that. Anyway, uh, this is this is the kind of stuff you can see. I tried to bring in like the most common errors that I see here. Um, the exception one, wherever that is, that one in particular has has killed me a few times in production. Um, that's a fun one that you'll find sometimes in job classes. Um, I don't know, that was my demonstration. Anyone have any code they want to, to look at as a class or be happy? Do you have any more questions? All right, that's my presentation. Be polite to people. <laughs>